Good afternoon. My name is George Latimer. I'm Westchester County Executive, and I'm here with the mayor of New Rochelle, Noam Bramson, uh, and the owner of Eden Walk Restaurant here at the restaurant uh, in the north end of New Rochelle, Wacky Gill section, as it's often known on North Avenue. Uh, this is a place that at various times both Noam and I have been in before. I don't think you've ever had dinner or lunch here with so many uh, people watching our every move, but uh, that, that's the story of today. Obviously, we're in the middle of a, uh, uh, an outbreak of coronavirus that has uh, had a, a very low st uh, strong presence here in the New Rochelle community. But our purpose here today is not just to keep my weight up and to force Noam to try to join me in eating, but to show that businesses still function in this community, they still function well, that uh, this restaurant and the other facilities that uh, service the people of New Rochelle and the surrounding communities are perfectly safe. Uh, there is nothing to fear in terms of this concern. From a science standpoint, I'm obviously not a scientist nor a public health official, but we've talked to our public health officials and they, they ensure us that the normal uh, procedures for making sure that places are clean and sanitized are sufficient to take care of any concern about virus which may be in a, in a, in a public setting and the concerns that we have to take as individuals, the washing of hands, the sanitizing of hands, that those actions are sufficient to ensure us not picking up the virus in our normal comings and goings as we, uh, as we go out into the community. Uh, the state and the county and the city have not declared a state of emergency where we move to extreme measures to be concerned about this. We've gone through all of these different procedures that we've talked about before, about uh, if you're sick, stay home, don't go to work, don't go to school. Um, if, you, if you have a medical concern, uh, make sure you call your, uh, your, prof your medical professional to get advice on how best to proceed, and they will help guide you to whatever that situation is. But w within all of those practical situations, uh, the mayor and myself and the other officials, I know Sarah Kay, uh, the city councilwoman from New Rochelle is with us today, and uh, there may be some other individuals as well that Noma's going to introduce. We are not overreacting, and we're not underreacting. We're trying to find that logical, a prudent middle ground situation where we know we've got a serious issue and we have to respond to it intelligently but at the same time we're not going to underreact to it where we take it as if this is all going to be resolved uh, you know uh, in the normal course of things this is a situation that requires the city the county and more importantly the state and the feds to step in and do certain things I want the mayor to say a few words I'll close up and then I think we'll have lunch sounds good uh, thank you very much, uh, George, uh, and I, I want to thank you not just for uh, being here in New Rochelle today, but for your steadfast, effective, balanced leadership throughout this episode. Uh, we know that the people in Westchester have been exceptionally well served uh, with you as county executive, more so now uh, than ever before. And I, I will partially echo and partially build on, on George's comments. Uh, we enjoy each other's company. We're looking forward to having a delicious lunch today, but of course the purpose of our being here is more significant than that. We are here to demonstrate support for and confidence in a neighborhood and a business community that has borne an especially heavy burden as a result of concerns uh, about uh, coronavirus. Um, and we, we recognize that there are many people following the news who may uh, be inclined to simply uh, stay home and not patronize businesses and visit with neighbors as they would ordinarily. Now, for those who are subject to a quarantine, obviously they do not have an option in a case like this. But for those who do have a choice, that may be an understandable reaction. And yet we should remember that the virus is not something that hangs around an entire neighborhood like a cloud. As George indicated, from a scientific perspective, it is shared through close contact with infected individuals. And of course, it's up to every individual to make their own judgment about the risk tolerance that is appropriate uh, for themselves. But I think we all also recognize that if we take risk avoidance to an extreme, it becomes self-defeating. It becomes disproportionate uh, to the real threat. And just to use an example, we can avoid any chance whatsoever of a car accident by never driving and never being on the road. But most of us would not accept that trade-off. Uh, for George and myself, this is an easy call. We have an opportunity to have a delicious meal. We have an opportunity to support a great business that's represented here by Josh. We have an opportunity to support an entire business community and an entire neighborhood. And we do so with absolute confidence that our own health will be just fine as we walk out and leave lunch and go on to enjoy the rest of our lives. And we urge those who have a similar perspective uh, to continue patronizing businesses and supporting our community just as they have 
this is a time for our community to come together and do what we need to do to support each other. Thank you. Uh, before we open it up to questions, I'd like to touch on two more things. The first thing is that uh, because of the size and scope of the concern, the state of New York has now taken over the primary responsibility for much of the decision making on issues of testing, on release of information about the results of testing, announcements of uh, how many individuals and where uh, they have been infected. Uh, I would look to the governor's press conference that's coming up in a little while as the place to find that information. Uh, at, at some point in time, I've been delivering that information on behalf of Westchester County, but now, again, given the size and scope of this, we defer to the state government and the State Department of Health, which has the authority not only to deal with the general portions of government that both Noam as a mayor of a city and myself as a county executive have authority, but to deal with issues that relates to schools. Uh, some schools have started to close. There was a conference call a little earlier today where the state gave direction to school superintendents, and I'll have to defer to whatever was said at that conference and what I assume the governor will touch on in his uh, press conference, which will uh, occur a little bit earlier this afternoon. Uh, we are making available to the state health department the resources of the county health department and those resources of the community to uh, enforce the various orders that come down from the top and to try to implement them intelligently and effectively. The state has established uh, their uh, operations center uh, on health here in New Rochelle. Uh, I think we're probably going to stop by and visit it either together or separately uh, sometime later this afternoon to see how it's operating and to determine what the interaction is between the county health department, which does have operations here in New Rochelle as well as elsewhere, and what expectations are for the city of New Rochelle. Uh, the city does not have a health department as such. They have some functions that uh, might lend themselves to support uh, when we're trying to make sure that we enforce the self-quarantine. There may be law enforcement elements of both of our two governments that will fit into play. But all of that will be directed through the state advice and the direction that we have. I've been joined by our Deputy County Executive, Ken Jenkins, who is uh, with us here today. And um, we also have our uh, Emergency Operations Center in effect in Hawthorne, where we're coordinating information as best as we can. It is the county that is operating a hotline uh, for those individuals who have been quarantined and have questions that are germane to a person who's being asked to self-quarantine. Uh, they can call that number. I believe you have that number already released. Uh, and then folks can reach that one. For people who have general questions about uh, coronavirus, they don't feel that they've been affected or impacted by it, they can dial 211 which is our general information line. It's run uh, through a relationship with United Way of Westchester. And, uh, you know, as they like to say in those telemarketing commercials, folks are standing by to be able to answer as many questions as can be asked. There are questions that people would ask which are not unreasonable questions but may not have a specific answer. Uh, you know, sort of the routine that I've heard is I had someone who had contact with someone who might have had contact with someone who might have, and do I have to quarantine? That can't be answered over a telephone. That has to be dealt with by, by some analysis of the level of contact uh, between the A and B contact, and now that we're down to the F contact, uh, how close or far away uh, those relationships were. And we are going to try, to the best of our ability, to let the medical professionals decide those decisions, not those of us who are in general government who try to make what we think are intelligent decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're going to hear things out of Washington, D.C., you're going to hear things out of Albany. Our job as local officials is to figure out how to protect our residents within the context of what our authority is and how we can mesh that authority with greater authority. We take this seriously, but we don't take it recklessly. One more point to make. We're here in this restaurant because there has been, uh, whether it's in the rumor mill or out there in social media, signs of uh, generic prejudice that's being extended to members of our community family. And not just the community of New Rochelle, but the community of our society. People who react to the fact that this uh, contagion began in China and are reflecting anti-Asian uh, uh, attitudes. Uh, we see that because the, uh, the original person, the indexed patient, uh, comes out of the Jewish community here in New Rochelle, that there is a, a, a flare of anti-Semitism that attaches to the response. And in both of these two cases and in any other cases, I believe it's an underlying prejudice that is trying to link on to a crisis that is not intrinsically ethnic, is not intrinsically driven around any person's background or, uh, or their, uh, their, their country of origin or their antecedents country of origin or their religious tradition. I happen to be Roman Catholic. The very same weekend of the events that the indexed patient went to, 
which happened to be events in the Jewish community. I happened to be at a family wedding outside of this area in which many of the attendees were Roman Catholic. Were we infected at that uh, service, it would have nothing to do with our religion. It would have to do that we were in the same room at the same time. But I think it's important to make a statement that when we, we look at the businesses of, of New Rochelle, of Westchester County, that this is not about your ethnicity. This is merely a medical question of what your proximity was to a person who may have been infected and to try to protect you from that infection. And uh, it, it, we're here at a restaurant that, uh, as I said, we've both been to before to make a statement as well as to have a good lunch. So I'm going to open it up to any questions. We'll try to answer within our framework. And you might ask a question that might be better directed to the state uh, folks, and, and we'll try to answer as much as we can and then defer what we, what we can't answer. Yes. Can you confirm that there are 11 new cases in Westchester? We have been told that that is the case. Uh, we do not have direct confirmation of that. Uh, we'll try to get confirmation of it over the course of the next half an hour to an hour. Uh, because the information about new cases are now coming out of the testing that's done under the control of the state, the state is making the announcements now rather than us being able to know that. Uh, but we have heard that. I, I presume it's true. We'll try to get a verification for you uh, as quickly as we can. And in terms of, in terms of uh, the quarantine, do you foresee a scenario where police might have to enforce quarantine if people are not staying behind closed doors? Well, that, that would be, you know, the, the worst case scenario if an individual who knows that they're under an order to quarantine chooses not to follow uh, their situation. I heard, I'm sure you did as well, the anecdote about an individual in New Hampshire who was told to quarantine, chose not to do it, went to an event, and potentially exposed a large number of people. So, so when the order comes down to quarantine, self-quarantine does not mean optional quarantine. It means rather than taking you to some institution that's been set aside, which really disrupts your life, we want you to stay in your home. Now, you, you know, you don't go to work, you don't go to school, you don't go out to Staples to buy uh, pens and a pad, you stay home. Uh, I'm told by Josh that he's got a great takeout business, <laughs> and, and, and not that I don't want him to get all the business. I'm told the North End Tavern has a great takeout business, La Herradura has a great takeout business. Uh, as you can see by my waistline, I've been in all of these restaurants <laughs> more than once. But my point being that there are ways for people to be self-quarantined uh, and still get the services that, that they need. In terms of using the, the police as a last court of last resort, we will do that if we have to. Right now, my understanding is the process we're using is to have telephone call checks to call into a family to make sure that in most of these cases, the, fa the quarantine situation is a family quarantine to make sure that all hands are on deck and we're working off of faith at this point. But if we call and you're not home a couple of times, then we're going to have to ramp up the to another level. How, how many uh, are under a voluntary quarantine? I don't have an exact number. I think we've estimated it to be in the vicinity of 1,000 people okay. because that, that represented everybody who was at the religious service at Young Israel during this period of time. And there was some overlap, but also some people at the bar mitzvah the next day and the funeral the next day that were not at the service. So we've estimated it to be about 1,000. And this doesn't include other self-quarantine situations around the county that exist. If my number is slightly inflated, it might be, but I think it's relatively speaking in the reasonable time frame. And if I'm corrected by state officials, then take their number, not mine. Tony? If I could ask Josh, um, <coughs> Young Israel of New Rochelle is just down the street. Um, has the quarantine impacting people who attended events there on that pertinent weekend, is it affecting your business? Have you had some cancellations? Are people picking up to take to their friends who are home quarantining? What have you seen? So business has been, you know, slightly down, but we are doing a lot more deliveries than normal. And as I coined the phrase, drop and dash. Drop at your front door. As soon as I leave, you're more than welcome to open the door. They're concerned for my safety. I'm concerned for their safety. So you have been making deliveries to the folks in this neighborhood? Yes, that is correct. And where do you leave the package? On the front door. Unless you have a side door entrance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that. Tony, do you want to follow up? Yes, please. If I could ask the mayor, um, trying to balance uh, what you said here today with what I believe is a decision to postpone your State of the City address. Can you walk us through the thinking there? Sure, and I'll be honest, that was a close call for us. Um, so to be clear, the State of the City is quite different from dining out at a restaurant. This is an event that brings together three or 400 people 
uh, in an enclosed space at, uh, at City Hall. Uh, so we did take guidance from uh, public health uh, professionals in making that choice. But another factor for us, frankly, was just organizational bandwidth. Uh, you know, for a, a city of our size, the state of the city is actually a big production, it requires a great deal of my own uh, mental focus and, and attention. And we didn't want anything to distract us from what should be our chief priority, which is making sure we're dealing with the public health challenges that New Rochelle is facing. So putting all that together just seemed like the wise decision to postpone the state of the city. So who is making phone calls? So there are a thousand people who are in, is it called a voluntary self-quarantine? Self Self-quarantine. It's, vo it's voluntary in the sense that we are asking you voluntarily to stay in your home. It is not voluntary that you be quarantined. It is, it is, a, it is a mandate that has come from the state down. They have determined that uh, the people that were exposed over that weekend and these three particular events could be highly contagious. And I guess they make that decision on the basis of what the events are. If you were uh, at, a, at an event like a wedding or, or a religious service, you would naturally intermix with other people like a cocktail reception would. And so you don't know who you've actually interacted with. So, uh, you know, the, the direction to us was to quarantine, self-quarantine the group. As far as who's making the phone calls, right now it's the healthcare professionals that are doing that. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we've heard you know the rumor mill runs rampant and we've heard all kinds of rumors many of which are untrue but we've heard some rumors that some of the individuals have decided uh, individually to go out in the community just to do one or two little things and we're trying to make sure we get the message to everybody using uh, emails as as we do have a list of that uh, to communicate to a group of people do not leave your home because even if you go across the street to the uh, the ATM you could interact with somebody you might leave something on the surface of the ATM machine. You know, who knows? You know? Please do. Yeah, if, I, if I could, I just want to add, um, we should recognize that for those who are subject to a quarantine of this kind, it is an enormous burden, uh, enormously disruptive uh, to their lives, to be pulled out of work, to be pulled out of school. And that's separate and apart from, from the emotional challenge of being concerned about the health of one's family, one's friends, uh, one's neighbors. Having said that, I have been enormously impressed by and grateful for the calm and composed way in which this community has confronted that challenge. I think those who are subject to the quarantine by and large understand that it is necessary in order to safeguard public health uh, and everyone is doing their part. And so uh, as the county executive pointed out, while we still must be prepared to do whatever we need to do in order to enforce that quarantine, uh, our, ex our experience and my expectation is that almost everyone who is subject to these rules will do so on a voluntary basis out of a commitment to the common good and out of a desire to protect their own families and their own neighbors. Mayor, any uh, possibility that your public schools will be closed? Uh, as of now, the decision to close the public schools has not been made, uh, but I would have to direct you to the school district for any further comment on that subject. Uh, the city government and the school district are independent entities, so I'm not in a position to speak on their behalf. And if I may follow up on that and one other point made, uh, for the, our friends in the press who are primarily New York City based, in Westchester County, with the exception of the city of Yonkers, the municipal governments do not run the school systems. There's a separate governmental structure of school board and superintendent. That is not true in the city of Yonkers. That is one of the cities in New York State where the city government does make the determination uh, through the superintendent of what happens in the schools. I want to ad address one other thing you raised about the cancel, Tony raised about uh, the postponement of the state of the city message. Right now, there are any number of large gatherings around the county uh, of all sorts. Some the county might sponsor, many more other entities are sponsoring. We are not at a point where we're calling upon those events to be canceled. And why is that? Because the contagion, while it, is, while it may be spreading, has not manifested itself with confirmed cases in all corners of the county coming from different sources of contagion. Right now, the bulk of what we know in addition to the people that we have to verify that was raised a second ago, uh, come out of a singular infection that spread to family, nuclear family, adjacent family, and people that they had in contact with. If we saw tomorrow that we had cases, if you know our geography, Peekskill in the Northwest, North Salem in the Northeast, and then in Yonkers and elsewhere at a much wider spread. So it's not just the number of cases, it's what's the geographical spread. If we saw an across the board geographical spread, then we would move to the next level of discussion 
discussion about broad-based events that might be held in other parts of the county, centrally in White Plains and elsewhere. We haven't reached that point yet. However, this is a dynamic environment, and by 6 o'clock tonight, you know, we might have a different set of circumstances, and therefore we'd make a separate set of decisions. But for right now, the, the other events we have ongoing, we have a... Um, uh, a, a very prominent basketball tournament going on at the county center, high school basketball to determine who is the, uh, the champion in the different categories. That's going to continue uh, as we see fit. We have a women's empowerment conference scheduled uh, for a week from tomorrow. That conference is still on and we're preparing uh, to uh, continue that. And that is in keeping with what we see as a countywide scope. Here in New Rochelle, as the mayor said, the decisions may be a little more focused because this is where we've seen a certain number of cases, and it's also where the resources of the city have been directed disproportionately to deal with this. Uh, and that may be the case in the future for other cities. But right now, New Rochelle is doing everything they can. They've worked very cooperatively with us. And for all the times you've ever seen governments, you know, you know, throwing each other under the bus, that's not what we're doing here in Westchester. We're trying to work cooperatively with the local governments as a team. Um, and, and hopefully we can effectively deal with this. Any other questions? Um, if there are no other questions, you're welcome to interview uh, Josh or Noma or anybody else one-on-one. -on -one. And then uh, uh, I'm, I'm, my nickname in the, inside the county government is Uncle George. I'm not a young man, so I'm old enough to be everybody's uncle. Uncle George is going to spring for lunch if you can stick around. You don't have to stick around, but Josh has got to make some money here today. We are, we are, we are into uh, the productivity. So if you want to stay and you want to join us for lunch, it's a treat from, uh, from us. Uh, and please feel free to do so, and please feel free to interview anybody one-on-one. -on -one. Josh, what's your last name? I'm sorry. Berkowitz. B-E-R-K-O-W-I-T-Z. -E Thank you. Are you the owner? Yes. Thank you. Do you occasionally cater um, for uh, Young Israel? Not so much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you.